Sleepless Jean At the edge of one of the deep forests of medieval France lived a struggling family of six, one daughter, three sons, and their parents. Father farmed and mother did everything else, including making clothing for her children and others in the nearby village. Jean was the youngest son. One morning, his mother shook him awake in his place on the floor, telling him to watch his little sister, the youngest of his siblings. The rest of the family was heading off to market. The ten-year-old nodded assent, but as soon as he heard the front door creak shut, he immediately fell back asleep. He was hunting a rabbit in a dream, and he wanted that dream to have a happy, bloody ending. When he awoke, the front door was wide open. His sister was nowhere to be found in the small dwelling made of rough field stone, nor was she amid the crops or in the nearby fields where she liked to pick pretty wildflowers to make bouquets for her mother. He ran about these fields, madly calling her name, but nothing answered him except the ravens. The sun was bright, the poppies tossed their heads on a breeze, and Jean sought of woes. But it is day, he told my, himself. She must be safe. He returned to the house and grabbed his father's largest knife and headed off into the woods. It was soon dark under those trees, which were much older than any living human being. He called and called. Sometimes something shadowy would race off below the undergrowth, too fast to be seen, and Jean would shiver. Shortly after that, Jean found one of his sister's legs. It still wore the boot his mother had made. He stared at it a very long time, longer than he had ever stared at anything in his entire young life. It had not been the wolves. It was clear from the cut that a human, or something like a human, had done this. When Jean returned home with his sister's leg in his arms, his parents were waiting for him. They stared at him with much horror and then hatred. He begged them to speak, even if it was to curse him, but they refused. His brothers turned their backs on him, too. It was around midnight when Jean heard his father and mother having a quiet conversation outside the house. He tried to make out what they were saying, but the wind scattered their words. They came inside and looked at him lying on his rough mattress on the floor. His mother smiled at him, and it was absolutely horrible. You want our forgiveness, no, she said. Yes, but I don't deserve it, the boy said with a trembling voice. Then you must go and find the rest of your sister. Bring every bit of her home, and we will forgive you. She must be buried whole. It may take you some time, but you are released from your work on the farm. Take the long knife with you and anything else you feel you need, but bring Cecile home. So every morning Jean would be the first awake, and he would head off into the woods, looking to gather up what remained of his little sister. One day he would return with only a hand, three days later the other missing leg. His parents would take his grisly finds, but what they did with them he had no idea. Nobody in the family would speak to him. He wondered if that would change when he found the head, the last missing part of his murdered sister. Nobody seemed to care that there was a murderer in the woods where Jean went every day, nor did he. If he were to end as his sister did, his terrible grief would end. He searched and searched for Cecile's head, but it was autumn and still it eluded him. Then, one sunny afternoon, he saw a young girl all alone in the forest, playing at the edge of a pond. He saw her from behind, but every time she turned in profile, he saw the child resembled his sister somewhat. He had felt so alone in his family for such a long time. The shunning had taken its toll. He even had to eat with the farm animals. Gripping the long knife, he crept up behind the child who was bent over, floating leaves upon the water, little fairy boats. He knew he had to wait a few days to let the head change a bit, to blur the recognition, and that is what he did. When he came tri home triumphantly with the head, with its long blonde hair, his parents ran to greet him. His mother cradled her prize, finally allowing herself to weep. She had never wept once since her daughter was murdered. Turning the head, she cried, Indeed, it is Cecile, the poor child. Look here, the birthmark under her long hair that she made me promise never to show anyone else. Thank the good Lord, she is home at last. And she came to Jean and pressed him to her wide waist, and her tears fell like acid on his head as she whispered, Thank you, thank you, child. We are restored. The family is whole. Praise the Lord. After that, Jean changed. He would return to the woods when he was to be working. His father took him to the village church and even had him rebaptized. But something wild had broken out in him. He bit one brother's hand and the other on the nape. Lycanthropy was suspected. 
Even Jean believed these whispers about him. He longed to be a wolf. He hated language, hated his thoughts. One winter night he ran off into the woods looking for the wolves, convinced that they would accept him as one of their own. And the wolves did find him, and they did take pity on him with their fangs. <laughs>